Good evening and welcome to Stand Up For Jehovah. I've been thinking a lot today. I did a video earlier and I said some pretty mean things about Jehovah. And then I thought about my other videos and I realised that I'd said some pretty mean things about him in those videos too. And I was just thinking that I think I, I might owe him an apology. I'm going to repeat the things that I've said about him and I'm going to add a few more because I want to get a sense of who Jehovah is. But I think I know why he is like he is. So, just to recap on a couple of the things that I've said about him. I, I talked about him detesting everything. He detests everything, doesn't he? He detests this and he detests that. And, and I felt that it really made him seem like some real grumpy old man. The other thing that I um, mentioned about him a while ago was that apparently, according to the witnesses, you can't tell what he's saying unless the faithful and discreet slave tell you. And again, I, I felt that this kind of pitched him in the grumpy old man bracket, like some doddery old, senile, piss-soaked old man in an old people's home. And <laughs> you can't tell what he's saying and then the the faithful and discreet slave come along. They say, oh, he, he, um, he wants custard on, on everything. He say, did, did he say that? Are you sure he said that? I can't tell what he said. The faithful and discreet slave says, yeah, you can't understand anything unless I tell you it. One of the other things that I've thought about him, that again puts him in a kind of a grumpy old man situation, is this. Um, they always say about new light, when, when the light gets brighter, say for instance, say for instance you'd, you'd thought something that they didn't currently teach and so you got disfellowshipped for it. And then the light got brighter and what you'd said happened to be the current light. And they'd say, well, you still deserve to get disfellowshipped because you were running ahead of Jehovah. And it's always reminded me of you know, trying to get past an old person on the pavement and they're, they're really slow but they're kind of wide as well and you're, you're walking quite fast and you're going, oh, come on, come on, let me get past and you, you scoot to one side and the shamble over to that side and so you, you scoot to the other and the kind of amble over to that side as well and you can't get past them. And this running ahead of Jehovah business just made me think that it's like, Six million people are all trundling behind this really old guy with some kind of walking frame. And, and if you jump past him, it's, it's a terrible sin and you deserve to be cut off and, and shunned by everyone. All three of these situations really, in my mind, put Jehovah as a really bad-tempered old man. And there are some other things that I think uh, don't put him in a very good light. He's really bloody touchy about women, isn't he? I mean, really touchy. You know the head thing. See this here, that. Does that offend you? Are you... It, it doesn't look like a vagina, does it? Are you offended by that? Because God is. God's deeply offended by that. If... If I had a dinkle and two manberries down there, then that... That would be fine. God wouldn't be offended by that at all. But because of my crass lack of dinkle and manberries, for some reason, that disgusts him. But having a tea towel on it, or a dishcloth, or a, a pan cosy, or a, or a tea cosy, that's fine. He's okay with that. And I, you just have to wonder, what kind of grumpy old person He's so offended by the top of a head because it's a female head. I mean, you've got to be pretty daft to be so offended by something that you actually made, haven't you? He's like a, a really Victorian dad, isn't he? Oh, his sisters aren't allowed to teach either. You can sit on the platform and you can talk to somebody else, but your bodies have got to be like sideways on like this or... So. So you're not teaching, you're just kind of having a conversation and they're just overhearing you. That's not teaching. Again, really oversensitive, I think. 
And boy, he doesn't like gays, does he? Oh dear me. He's very, very oversensitive about men who love men or women who love women. Although, as we all know, and Queen Victoria was quite right on this, there's no such thing as a lesbian, because what can they do? That was Queen Victoria's take on it, and I'm sure that's probably Jehovah's take on it as well. Very, very sensitive he is, hypersensitive. Gets real offended about, about the tiniest thing. You think back in the... The Old Testament, God, he was always killing people and slaying people and having people cut bits of other people off and deliver him to people and, you know, making whales swallow people. All sorts of ridiculous scenarios. Oh, I'm going to build a boat and kill everybody because you're not being nice. He's just deeply, deeply oversensitive about a lot of things. And then I guess the New Testament came along and he sent along his son, didn't he? And like an old guy who's, who's run a company for a lot of years and then his son grows up and takes over, the young book comes along and I guess he felt like he'd been put out to pasture, really. Maybe he felt he'd had his nose put out of joint a bit. But I think I know why Jehovah is so bad-tempered and grumpy about everything. It just dawned on me today when I was in Tesco's. It's because we've been getting his name wrong all these years. We've been calling him the wrong name. Imagine if you were called Bert and literally every single person called you Bart, including your close family. You'd be going, no, sorry, it's Bert. Yeah, yeah, Bart, that's why I heard you, Bart. No, no, it's Bert. Yeah, Bart, we got you. That's fine, Bart. How are you doing, Bart? No, it's fucking Bert. And this is what's happened to Jehovah. So here's the history on Jehovah's name. Um, in the Old Testament, they didn't have syllables, did they? Not syllables, consonants, vowels, whichever thing they didn't have that went in between the other letters. And so they wrote Jehovah's name. Sorry, they wrote God's name, because it's not Jehovah, as you're about to find out as soon as I can tell you the story, as YHWH, which we all know is called the Tetragrammaton. And so they didn't have vowels. I did know it, just couldn't be bothered to say it properly. They didn't have vowels. And so the pronunciation of words in the ancient Hebrews was just passed down by, by word of mouth. And what they wrote, they knew how to say it, because people taught them how to say it. And so, and they also they thought it was really bad luck to say God's name. It was they were really superstitious. They didn't want to say God's name at all. So it was thought that it was meant to be said Yahweh, which brings me on to a really brilliant joke that I saw on Facebook today. I can't claim credit for it, but there's a picture of Jesus saying to his disciples, and so I said to them, "I'm God's son," and they said, "No way," and I said, "Yahweh." So it was thought to be pronounced Yahweh. Um, but then we wouldn't know that, would we? Because the pronunciation was lost as it was passed down. Anyway, because they didn't have these vowels, the pronunciation was passed down. But in about the 19th century, the Masoretes, they introduced like little marks uh, for the vowels because they thought, hey, do you know what? I'm going to invent something called vowels. I think it's a really bloody great idea. And I'm going to start sticking little marks in between the consonants. And I've just invented vowels, get me. And so they put these little marks in between YHWH. Um, but they still didn't want to say the divine name because they were still superstitious. So the vowels that they put in between them were from the words for Adonai or Elohim. Okay, which wasn't God's name. Um, but then they thought, well, it, we're still not saying God's name. We're right, we're saying YHWH and we're putting the wrong vowels in between. And that amalgam of those two words became known as Jehovah. So it was born from the fact that they didn't want to say God's proper name. So Jehovah is a deliberate mispronunciation. So nobody's saying God's name. Well, that would fucking piss you off, wouldn't it? Right? My name's Louise. And if you started calling me Lawoos on purpose... And then you told everybody, hey, 
get Lawoos. She does these really great videos. And then not only did you do that, but you went back through my book that I'd written and you changed every time I got my name in there from what my real name was to Lawoos. I'd be well pissed off. And then you built a religion around it and told everybody uh, where La Woo's as witnesses, which by the way is not a bad idea because I could do with a bit of cash. So if you do feel like uh, becoming La Woo's as witnesses, please feel free. But you can see where I'm going with this, can't you? Old guy, young book of a son's come along, pushed his nose out of joint, he's getting old, and then everybody starts calling him the wrong name deliberately. How pissed off would you be? So I think all these times, when I've kind of poked fun at Yahweh for being grumpy, um, I think I kind of owe an apology, really. And I must stop calling him Lawoos because it's not his name. It's not his name, it never was. The Lawoos' witnesses have just invented it and gone back and changed the whole Bible and then pretended that it was his name. Make no wonder he's grumpy. Well, Thank you for watching another episode of Stand Up For Whatever His Name Is.